Hey there fellas, today I have a new Grim Down character builds for ya, on top of the 6 previous easy builds for beginners. Same as in the previous video, I will demonstrate and explain their playstyle and provide links to a complete builds in a Grim Dawn build calculator, which include everything you need, class skills, devotion points distribution and the recommended items. Today's build offer melee, ranged and mage builds, which are incredibly tenacious, or we can say even undying, they are fun and easy to play with, and at the same time, through various skills and items combinations, they also have just insane survivability. Not only they can easily clean the hardest dungeons in the game like it's nothing, but also can solo even the super bosses in the game, which are often impossible for most of the builds even in the best possible item sets. Let's take a look. The first and probably the most illegal build today is Warder, a mix of Warrior and Shaman classes. This build is wrapped around passive health regeneration, so huge that this build can kill Kalagadra, one of the three hardest super bosses in the game, by simply face tanking it. In the game's hardest dungeons on ultimate difficulty, you can literally just take hits from dozens of monsters and standing in the terrain damage without taking any damage to yourself at all, because it will be not able to overcome your passive health regeneration per second. You'll begin this build from Maxin Savagery and its first upgrade, Might of the Bear, as well as Brute Force skills in Shaman, then Manhir's Will and Military Conditioning in Soldier. Then max the rest of the highlighted skills, but do not go too greedy with the damaging ones and do both damaging and sustain ones in turn. The main damage types here are Physical, Internal Trauma and Bleeding. Devotion setup is focused to maximize everything possible in terms of passive health regeneration, debuffs cleansing, as well as to give you a decent lifesteal bonus. It will be super useful as well, as this build damage is heavily auto-attack based, and of course some damage boost procs on top. The core item set is the Nature's Avenger set, and the rest of the recommended items for the best synergy are also listed in the build link. Your core attributes are Physique and Cunning, with heavy focus on Physique to furtherly max out your health pool and so the passive regeneration numbers. Recommended movement skill is the Glyph of Sudden Strikes or the Glyph of the Incorporeal Winds. The playstyle is as simple as it's effective. You charge into your enemy, use your war cry and smash without even bothering about the incoming damage. Everything around dies and you are still at the full health. GG. Can a mage be a crazily good tank, while still delivering great damage? Easy. This battle mage, a combination of arcanist and soldier classes, is a cold and lightning damage based mage with a shield, with incredible crowd control and AoE damage, decent uh, single target damage and insane survivability. Through the combination of incredible shield defense, passive damage reduction, 3 bubbles, damage negation procs and some extra passive healing on top. Begin from maxing both Markovan Advantage and Manhir's Will, then Iskandra's Elemental Exchange, Manifestation, Olexra's Flash Freeze, Drozen's Sky Shard, then max the rest of the highlighted skills with offensive and defensive skills in turn. Also make sure to get level 1 of Mirror of Ereoctus skill SF, as even level 1 gives complete invincibility, only the skill cooldown gets decreased as the skill level goes up. Devotion here is focused on collecting extra bubbles, improving your shield defense and also adding extra cold and lightning damage with some additional enemy debuffs from these procs. Main attributes are Spirit and Physique, with larger half invested into physique. The core set is Iskandra's set, but with a shield instead of an offhand, with Turian's reprisal being the best option here. The recommended movement skill is the Glyph of a Winter Fox. Remember the iconic double shield build from Dark Souls? Here we go with something similar in Grim Dawn. This mix of a soldier and Oz Keeper with a strong focus in soldier is a shield super tank that has these stats. Huge blocking damage negation value, around 80% blocking chance and nearly non-existent less than 1 twentieth of a second 
block recovery, damage type, physical and internal trauma. From Oathkeeper, we will only take a level of Presence of Virtue Aura to its upgrade Heaven to maximize our shield blocking effectiveness, and all other skills points will be invested into Soldier. Begin from maxing the Cadence and Force Wave skills, for now without upgrades, then Manhir's Will, Military Conditioning and Fighting Spirit, then Max Overguard, without upgrade yet get it closer to the late game, Shield Training and Fighting Form and then the rest of all the skills. Devotion is focused on maximizing the most of the shield defense, some extra debuffs protection and damage negation, and of course, getting a large damage boost and procs to physical damage. The core item set is Markovian set. Your core attributes are physique and cunning, with the focus on the physique, and the recommended movement skill is the glyph of seismic strengths. Want to lose some excess body weight or to gain some quality muscle mass and improve your endurance? The lads on the fortress manage to do it, and you can do it too. Don't have a time to visit the gym yet still want to improve your physical form, but don't know where to start? Join the Gaming Gains Guide today, my personal project to help a fellow gamers to improve their health, yet without exhausting diets and 100% home training possible. You will get a personal training for gym or home exercises and meal plans from me not to just reach your goal, but do this without stress and considering your personal health and life conditions. Hop to the gaming games room in our Discord that's linked down below and improve your physique and health already today. The next one is Mage Hunter, a mix of Inquisitor and Arcanist and a ranged build. Yeah, you heard it right, an undying ranged build, with strong elemental damage, great mobility and high, as for the ranged class, resistance is pool. Its survivability is greatly buffed by a passive damage absorption, 3 bubbles, 1 class plus 2 from devotion, huge lifesteal at low health and unique triple rune skill setup, where first rune is buffing yourself and repels enemies and two other runes lying at the outer circle around you inflicting huge damage to the enemies while also stunning, freezing and slowing them down all at the same time. You can begin your run from maxing Stormbox of Elgolot, as is generally one of the best early game skills. Then around level 15 or so, unlearn it and max the ranged expertise and bursting round skills. Then the world of renewal, without the upgrades at first. Then go for Iskandra's Elemental Exchange, one level of Mirror of Ereoctis and Maven's Sphere of Protection, and after that, the rest of the skills in the order you prefer, but once again make sure to raise offensive and defensive skills in turn. The core set is the Rune Binder. Your core attributes are physique and cunning, spent more or less equally, and the recommended movement skill is the Glyph of a Winter Fox. Now, how about a build that lands up to 200,000 damage from a single critical hit and having a constant 60% and more up to 140% lifesteal. Meet this Reaper, a two-handed melee build, a mix of Necromancer and Nightblade, that does mostly vitality and some cold damage and is simply consuming the hardest bosses in the game as they are a tasty donut. Lastly, it also has a decent dodge chance and up to 7 summons, which are dealing great damage and some debuffs while scaling with player and not the pet bonuses. Begin as a necromancer, maxing out the ripping strike and bone harvest, for now without upgrades, then max out the Whale of Shadow and Pneumatic Burst in Nightblade, then max the Spectral Binding and the Dread upgrade for the Bone Harvest. After that, get the rest of the skills highlighted in the calculator link. The devotion here is to max your lifesteal, vitality damage and enemy debuffs as well as to add some extra control skills resistances and the damage negation. The core set is the Blood Knight set. Your core attributes are physique and cunning, spent with a bit of preference to physique, and the recommended movement skill is the Glyph of Wayward Souls. The last build for today is an Archon, a Shaman and the Oathkeeper mix, with a unique one-handed and shield build that does vitality and bleeding damage heavily over time. 
but the direct damage itself is the not the main focus here. His skill set and skills upgrades from both devotion and items will lay waste of enemies through debuffs, slow their both movement and attack speeds, often paralyze them and reduce their resistances for multiple damage sources. As for the survivability, this build is somewhat a jack of all trades, but with a spectacular result in the end. Healing from four sources, passive lifesteal, extra devotion lifesteal procs and totems, both direct healing and life drain from enemies around, together with a decent shield protection and even more lifesteal and extra damage negation at lower health, making it extremely annoying and virtually invincible against any kind of enemies. Begin from maxing savagery and the grasping wines and shaman, without upgrades for now. Then invest up to 15 points into Shaman and get the first Savagery upgrade and the Mogdragon Pact with the Heart of the Wild upgrade and then max the Vendigo Totem with upgrade. After that, get the rest of the needed skills, preferably beginning from Heaven in Oathkeeper. Devotion here is aimed on maxing your vitality and bleeding damage as well as furtherly strengthening lifesteal abilities and even more enemy debuffs, and also add some bonuses to shield defense and damage negation. This build is not based on any particular item set, while one of the main legendary items, the Blood Render Sword, that converts your savagery entirely to vitality damage, can be acquired easily through the crafting using the blueprint from the Cult of Salal faction in the Forgotten Gods DLC. The recommended movement skill is the Glyph of the Ravenous Ventico. That's it for now, folks. Let me know if you enjoyed any of these builds and what is your own favorite when it comes to such kind of characters in RPGs. Don't forget to enable channel notifications and join our Discord to always stay in touch. Stay tuned, stay healthy and stay happy. Simitar here, signing out.